So we went from the earliest fry pan design to other smaller manufacturers to Gibson making their first production model called the ES150, which had a matching amplifier in 1936. Now Epiphone was also in the picture, but one could probably make the argument that the early 1950s was when everything changed in terms of mainstream adoption of the electric guitar when Leo Fender introduced the broadcaster, soon to be renamed the Telecaster, due to a trademark clash with Gretsch, which also made a broadcaster set of drums. Now, there were many other footnotes to early guitar designers, uh, people like, uh, say, Dobro, Vega, Audiovox, and Volutone, but a lot of these applications of these designs were in a lap steel and Hawaiian-style plane. But what really makes uh, Fender's contribution stand pretty much head and shoulders above the rest is that his earliest designs have endured now that you can just go down to your local music store and pick up a Telecaster today. I mean, not a lot has changed those early designs were that good. And also another thing I think of, also because we have a massive catalog of music that was recorded on these tellies, uh, this, these strats, uh, Les Pauls for that, that matter, and a number of other guitars, that we've become kind of accustomed to how these guitars sound. And they've become uh, pretty much kind of like the touchstones or the standards by which all other uh, guitars are compared. Anyway, we will learn all about the different types of guitars um, in the next section. But I just wanted to impress upon you that uh, pretty much just a couple of things here. The electric guitar, when you think about it, in terms of all of human history, it's very much a young invention. And two, the sheer simplicity of this design has made it a fairly constant and static type of instrument. I mean, a few things have changed, but a simple, elegant design, um, when you think about it, tends to defy uh, the decades. Okay, so we'll look over the single, ch uh, sorry, signal chain from the pick to the speaker and just see all of the variables along the way. Look at all these variables. Now the major variables along the signal chain are guitars, amps, effects, speakers, and microphone. But of course, you can break down each area much further by asking questions like in the case of the guitar. What type of guitar we're going to be using? What type of pickup configuration is that going to be? Heck, what type of strings are you using? What type of picks are you using? Or even nails if you're finger picking? Uh, what techniques are you striking the string uh, when you're playing? Heck, who's playing the guitar. That's a big one here. Now all of this stuff happens before the signal even hits the, the amp. Look at all this stuff just you know within the guitar and you know what? I'm probably leaving a lot of stuff out here. Then we go over to amps. What type of amps is going to be a solid state or two? How many different gain stages are there going to be? How many watts? What type of tone stack is there in that amp? Is there any other tone shaping there? Then we move on to effects, and this is a huge category that's broken down into a number of different broad types. First off, we have our gain, then our dynamics, modulation, pitch shifters, delays, reverbs, and loopers. And then we round out the signal chain as the signal finally is transformed from its electrical signal to its audio analog through speakers. And of course, there's a lot of configurations here. You know, what type of configurations? Is it just a single uh, speaker or is it a four cab? Uh, also, is the back open or closed? What is the power handling? Also, the impedance. And of course, the tone can then be referred finally through uh, microphones in the case of recording your guitar tone or sound reinforcement in the case of a PA and we have some decisions there. What type of microphones are we using? What type of blend are we blending between these microphones? And of course, what is the placement or positioning of these microphones?